a Stanley to Gary now. Hopefully he survives. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Aegis Lawn Care here. So today we are going to be scarifying this lawn here and we're going to be top dressing and seeding. There's a lot of thatch and dead in this lawn, it's just suffered quite a bit. So, I mean it's greening up again from all the weather we've had but as you can see here, it's just all gone a bit mad. There's a thatch build up layer there. So what scarifying is, is basically it's going to go along, we've got some blades basically like this and they're going to go and along into the ground and they're going to basically rip all this out. So we've got the spreader for the seed here and massive shout out to Garden Imports for sending us out the Lanzi leveling rake and the Lanzi soil spreader. Excited to use that. I've uh, not used them before so be interesting. We've got a cold cast scarifier. You can see the blades there so they're going to dig into the ground and rip out all of that thatch and any unwanted debris in the lawn. And then the blower, just, yeah, we're gonna blow some stuff about. Cut the lawn, scalp it. Got the steel arm RM655RS there, and we'll scalp it as low as we can get it on the lowest cut. Then we'll go over the scarifier. We do multiple passes to try and get as much out as possible. So we've got this big uh, metal fence that's been put up here because they've got a big, um, is it Bernie's mountain dog? Huge thing and it just gallops all over the lawn. So they're gonna keep that section there for the dog and then this section, hopefully we can get some recovery. Uh, I can also see the owner has also laid down some seed already, but I mean, it, some of it's taken, but I can still feel like a build up of thatch here. This is, you know, there's, you look at that. So it's quite, it's, it needs, it does, he's, he's been over with a scarifier, but it, it needs a, it needs us to sort of go over it again and give it a real good scarifier. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna mow down and scalp the lawn. This is the lowest setting on the lawn mower. And the reason why we do this is number one, it helps when it comes to scarifying, you're not gonna be pulling out as much grass. If the grass was longer, you've got that chance that the blades are going to grab that grass and rip it out. So that's the reason why we cut it short. And also it allows the seed that we're going to sow to compete against the current grass we've got now. So currently at the minute it's going to be shocking the grass, cutting it that low. So it's going to slow the growth down a bit. The lawn will be completely fine, but that seed will then be able to compete against the current grass that's there now. Okay, so what time of year should you be scarifying your lawn? I always recommend to either scarify in the spring or in the autumn. And the reason for this is because the lawns are actively growing. If you are to scarify in the summer where you've got extreme temperatures and you're scalping your lawn down low to scarify, this is gonna take longer for your lawn to recover and it's gonna shock it even more and it might not even recover as well. So it's always recommended that you do it in the springtime where the temperatures are cooler, but the grass is still actively growing. I like to do mine, start mine around about sort of mid-September and then up until sort of the first week in October, second week in October. And that gives me a good sort of window to, to get some seed down if it needs to. And it gives it that time to germinate before we get any frost come along. So time to start scarifying. I'm gonna use the cold cast electric scarifier here. This machine has served me well. It is starting to show signs of wear and tear, so I might need to get a new one next year, but I love these little electric scarifiers. They work wonders, they are maintenance free. And this one served me five years and you know, 80 quid, five years, that is, that's a good deal. Whereas with petrol, you would need to service them probably yearly as well. So that's added expense. So if you are looking to sort of renovate your lawn and you're looking for scarifiers definitely think about going electric because they work just as good as petrol and they are cheaper as well so as you can see here quite a lot of thatch is coming out of this lawn which is good stuff 
This is the first pass, so we're going to go over the lawn, the lengthways, and then we're going to go width as well, and we'll assess what's come out. Okay, so we're on our second pass now. The first pass was great. We managed to get a lot of thatch out of the lawn, which is fantastic. But a second pass will definitely be better just to make sure we can get as much of it out as possible. So this will also allow for a good seed to soil contact. So when you are throwing seed down, it's going to be hitting soil and not thatch. And then once we top dress that, it's going to allow a little layer of soil just over the top just to nest that seed in. We are done scarifying. Pick up these last bits here. And then we will mow over it again just to suck up any last bits. The steel's great at sucking. So it's got a really good, nice suction on it. So we'll pick it up, we'll bag it, get rid of it. And as you can see here, this is, this is what the result is after scarifying. So it's taken a lot of, a lot of dead and rubbish out of the lawn. It's what builds up over the year. I don't think this lawn's been scarified in a while. So, but underneath, it's quite a sort of a loamy sort of um, soil. So, it's not bad soil here. You can see here. All the thatch, the rubbish, some grass in there still. Right, let's crack on. Get it halfway a ton. Right, next up, it's time to put the Lansy Leveling rate to the test. This area here is quite a low spot here. So there's two big ones, this one here and there's one just further down the bottom of the garden. So what we're gonna do is just gonna try and build this up a bit, try and level it off with a rake and um, compact it down, level it off. Uh, I've used level, lawn leveling rakes before, so I know what to expect, but let's see how this one performs. First things I noticed about this one is you can take this off here. This can come off here and this can store along this one as well so you can put it away. If you're not using it at the end of the year, you don't need it until springtime or autumn. That's, that's a plus side to that. I've not seen many like that before. And with a detachable handle as well. And it's it's quite heavy. It's not heavy, it's, it's just solid. It feels solid. Screw together like that. All right. <laughs> That's a bit better. Look at that pile of mess you just made. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe too much soil on there. <laughs> Maybe. But we're spreading that anyway, right? Huh? We're spreading the, the yeah, excess oh yeah. anyway, so, so what we're doing, it's not like it's too much. Well, what I have to do is just... 
Yeah, that works quite well on a bigger lawn, isn't it? When you've got yeah. bigger space, that tool works pretty well on a big space, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bag of um, Dobby's topsoil. Yeah, one there, there's another one down there. One thing I have noticed is this brake hasn't flipped over. Ones I've used in the past, the balance, they haven't been balanced well. So every time you pull back, it flips over. This one seems to be well balanced, which is good. And guys, if, you, if these, you're interested in these type of tools, um, I'll leave the link in the description. So the area there was, was quite a dip in. So we've just raised it up a little bit. Um, I can't keep adding soil to it. You gotta do little by little. So there's things like this. Just make sure you just sort of, I mean, I've got quite a bit in there, a couple of inches down into that crater that was there. But as the year goes on, add a little bit more, keep going, add a bit more, just gradually building it up. quite a dip so he's used compost in the past to try and raise it up but it just doesn't have that leveling compound it just doesn't it, compost won't level a lawn for you so it's best just to try and build up little by little with um topsoil or a loam dress
Yeah. Scratch it, just scratch it the surface off with a uh, brush or a rake, mate. So we've got this seed from the grass people. This is not sponsored. Only Lansia is sponsored. Hey guys, just want to apologise quickly for the voiceovers on the video. Normally I like to speak to the camera, but obviously with the machines going and plus the workmen on the roads, they're doing a lot of road works outside, so they're doing some drilling and we can barely hear each other in the garden. So I thought it'd just be best if I do voiceovers. So Gary is spreading the seed. It's his first time spreading the seed and he's having a blast of a time. We've set the calibration levels quite low, so if we so little we can go over again just to apply more if you set your calibration quite high it is you're going to get rid of all your seed and you might end up having half a garden to do but we've got quite a lot of seeds and that's not going to happen so next up we will be um, lawn dressing and we'll use the Lansy spreader i'm really excited to use this uh, i've not used this before i've heard some great reviews about it and i've seen other gardeners use it and yeah, it looks like a load of fun and it looks like a lot of back saving work. So just a little bit about the seed. So we're using a mix of 70, sorry, 80% uh, ryegrass and 20% fescue. And we're applying this at around about roughly 35, 40 grams per square meter. Um, and yeah, that should be plenty for a top dress like this. There will be some areas where there is next to no grass we'll have to apply some more just to make sure it doesn't come out too sparse but we'll just go over it and make sure that it's looking pretty good um so yeah so let's get on to spreading this soil right next up we've got the lansy spreader so this is pretty cool rightio turn it around so the great thing about this is the handle actually fits inside the cage which is pretty useful so when you're putting it away for storage that'll be good okay guys so onto the 24 inch Lansy lawn spreader we're going to start loading it up with the dressing and the first thing I noticed is that the gap is quite wide, so getting a bag in is no problem at all, especially if it's a compost bag, because normally compost bags are about 75 litres, some of them, and you can fit quite a lot in there. So I reckon this could probably hold around 70 litres. So the first bags were quite wet, and I was very impressed with the way it performed. So normally if you're spreading wet soil, it can be an absolute nightmare, but this thing didn't seem to struggle at all with it really. Also what I noticed about using the spreader after loading it a few times, I noticed how it was sieving out just the soil and inside you'd find that there'd be quite sort of, there'd be lumps of rocks, stones and all types of stuff in there. So that's a plus side to it. You're only putting down on the lawn what you want to put down. Whereas if you were spreading this by hand, you'd have to go round at the end and you'd be raking up. So that is a plus side to this tool. Stanley to Gary now, hopefully he survives. <laughs> One thing I should mention is how quick we are doing this. Normally we'd be a quarter of the way through. We're just over halfway through on spreading this soil now. So this has taken roughly around about, I would have said, 10 to 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes to do this half a lawn. So if you were spreading this by hand, it could easily take about an hour hour and a half depending and that's also you having to go round at the end and if you want to pick up any of the rubbish that's on you get in the bags from the lawn but with this landy spread you don't need to worry about that it's all going to be safely stored in the cage
Hey guys, so we're done. We're about to just give this a drop of water and then we're done for today. Well, we've got to go to another job after this, but yeah, it's um, it's come out as I expected it to. This lawn is not a, it's not a lush flat green lawn. It's not supposed to be that lawn. It's a family lawn with dogs running up and down it. So the whole point of just getting it, grass back in it, getting it a little bit more healthier. This is what the idea was, you know, if we were gonna, level it all, I mean, you couldn't level this off, you could, but you'd have to get diggers in here to flatten it all down. You know, you'd have to add tons and tons of soil on here. It's not what the customer wanted, the customer just wanted it green again. Um, so that's what we're here, we're done. Well, hopefully we've done. Uh, the Lansley spreader, absolutely amazing. Definitely recommend it 100%. It saved us a lot of time today. Um, yeah, just great bit of kit, well worth it. So if you're looking to top dress your lawn, have a look at them because they're they're worth every penny. Right, cheers guys. I'm gonna do a bit of watering. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Just finish off the rest of this watering and uh, we're done. So step by step really is mow your, gr your grass quite short, scarify it, pick up anything that you've scarified. You can aerate if you want a plug core, um, core aerate or you can use the, um, the old fork and then you want to seed and lay your layer of soil over the seed just nesting on it i mean when i look down i can, can still see seed i know this is not it looks like it's quite thick but it's not it's it's quite a thin layer of soil over the top so as a t even over as a time sort of when you're watering it's gonna wash between those those blades anyway but appreciate it thanks guys for watching and uh we'll see you in the next one